Hello, and welcome to the introduction to Qualtrics tutorial from American University's Center for Teaching, Research, and Learning. This video is part one of a three-part series um, introduction tutorial. The introduction series will cover what is Qualtrics, how to create and access Qualtrics, navigating Qualtrics and the different features, creating a simple survey. And for this workshop, the it is assumed that the viewer is familiar with the Institutional Review Board Policies and Standards, Standards or IRB for ethical research, how to distribute surveys and collect results. And then finally, we will also go over how to download results into file formats compatible with Excel, SPSS, or Stata. The first video will go over what Qualtrics is, how to create a Qualtrics account, how to create a new survey, how to collaborate a survey with another user, and then we will go over how to create survey questions such as multiple choice and matrix of responses or like art type. So first off, Qualtrics is an online survey platform that is available to all American University users. This introductory course will help familiarize users with the basics of the program so that they be can begin creating, distributing, and analyzing their own surveys. So now that we've gone through that, we're gonna, to get started, we're gonna open up Qualtrics. We're gonna go to american.qualtrics.com. Any user with an American University email address can also set up a Qualtrics account for free. Um, to do so, you would go to american.qualtrics.com, just like I did, and log in using your American University username and password. If it's your first time logging in, you're gonna select, I do not have an account. This will ask you to confirm some basic information before creating your account. I already have a Qualtrics account, so I can just log in with my American University username and password. Now, to create a new project, you would just select create a new project button in the type, top right-hand corner right here. And um, it will give you like a couple options if you want like a project that's already created or a project from scratch. Um, it'll also have project templates in addition to um, if you have used Qualtrics before and have made a library, you can also start a project based off of a library. Um, but I'm just going to create a project from scratch. So I'm going to select survey. And then I'm just going to do a blank survey and hit get started on the right hand side. You can name your project here. I'm just going to do test project. Um, if you have folders of um, different projects where you're keeping things organized, you can select what folder you would like to put, put it in. And then you can select create from a blank survey project, or you can import from an existing project or a survey from your library at this selection as well. Um, I'm just going to do a blank survey and I'm not going to put it in a categorized folder right now. Um, I'm just going to click create project in the right hand bottom corner. And this is how it will look when you first create the project. Uh, there are no questions yet and there is a blank default multiple choice question that you could start typing in uh, to create your first question. And the first question will allow you just to click and type in any text. And then you can also click the responses and type in responses for the multiple choice. If you wanna change the question type, the menu on the left-hand side gives you a ton of options uh, for each question. You can change the question type right here at the top to any of the variety of questions that is provided Multiple choice is the default, but there are a lot of other ones as well that we will be going over. Um, then there's also just different options for the questions. 
Um, you can select the number of choices here. So if I only want two responses, two options, or three or four, that's all right here. And there'll be even more settings that we'll go over later in the video. Um, to add another question after you type this one in, you can just add, click the add new question button on the right hand side. And that would add, uh, once you select what kind of question you would like, it's another multiple choice, then it would just add the second question here. Um, you can also import questions from a library. If you're using a library of previous questions that you've used, that option is right here. Then if you would like to add a block, which means another page to your survey, survey if you want to separate the questions on different pages of your survey, the options here, you would just click that and then you can add questions on that block. And then next, I'm gonna show you how to collaborate a survey. That's also an option for anyone else that has a Qualtrics account, you can collaborate with them by going back to your homepage. And I'm going to go to an example survey I've already created on the right-hand side. You'll see these three little button, three little dots buttons, and you can do collaborate. That's the second option. And you would just type in their username or email. Um, so if I would type in my colleague's name, for example, he would be right here. And I would just select his name and then hit save. And you can also control, once you do that, there will be different options. You can give them editing access, report access, activation access, copy, and distribution access. You can check each box of what exactly you want them to have access to. Um, and then from this page, you can also decide um, later if you want to change their access, you can select that or um, delete them as a contributor and they will never, they will not have access again. Um, that's all possible right here. I'm going to cancel this out. And then I'm gonna go to the example survey that I've already created for the tutorial right here and just select that. And that way we can go through the questions that are already loaded and created in the survey. So first off, we're gonna go to um, what best describes your identity. And this is actually not the beginner survey. So let me go back and I'm going to hit the intro survey that I meant to hit the first time. And then yes, which of these best describes how you identify. And uh, for these, you can go ahead and click into the question and edit it or change it um, for you. Since you're creating the survey, you'll be typing the question initially, which of these best describes how you identify. And then you have the options of writing in the questions You can click in each one, you can control the number of choices here. And then also if you wanna type them all at the same time, you can just hit edit multiple and you can type them all at the same time. And then if you want another one, you would just hit enter at the bottom and that would put you in the next line and you could write another answer. There's also the option of allowing people to select multiple answers. So if you wanna do that, the under question type right here, you can allow one answer or allow multiple answers and it will turn them into little boxes that they can check so that they can select more than one thing. And then also for answers where you want them to be able to type in their own answer, um, such as the uh, for, fourth answer, fifth answer down here, um, you would just select the answer and then hit the arrow drop down and then hit allow text entry right here. Since it was already checked, it deselected it 
and I'm going to reselect it again, allow text entry, and that allows them to type in their own answers here so that they can self-describe themselves. So another option we have is to change the names of the questions. Um, you'll see in this question below, it says Q4. That's the what Qualtrics gives the automatic question name is just Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Um, but if you'd like, you can actually select the question name and then change it. I've changed this one to identity. That just allows it so that when you download the data later, it will have a variable name that um, you have selected for that question. Um, so I have chosen identity for this question. And then the next question I'm gonna show you is the age question. That's, I named it age because the question is just asking, what is your age? To make sure that we don't have any minors taking the survey, um, that everyone participating is a legal adult 18 years or older. Um, the first question that I set up here um, is just, what is your age? I changed it for multiple choice to text entry so that they could type it in. Um, and that is easier just so that you can get like standard deviations and average ages um, if you have them type in their exact number of their age. Um, so for this, uh, I'm going to make this a little smaller. And then we can also add validation to make sure that they type in the number and not write out the number. That'll just make the data easier later um, because everything will be consistent. You won't have to clean it. So you're gonna hit add requirements and hit, uh, you're also gonna hit force response just so they have to answer this question to make sure that everyone taking the survey is 18 or older. And then we can also do add validation and do and do the content type. So select content type under add validation. And then we will select number so that it has to be a number. And then you can even put in the minimum and maximum uh, number. Uh, so I'm gonna just put zero to 110 as the minimum and maximum. And then that allows that forces the respondent to enter their age as a number in between zero and 110. And then also we're gonna put in some basic skip logic so that anyone that answers this question under the age of 18, if they indicate that they are younger than 18, that they will be skipped into the end of the survey. So select the question and then hit skip logic and then is less than 18. So we're gonna um, skip this question to the end of the survey if what is your age is less than 18 and just hit confirm. And then you'll see it right here. Skip to end of survey if what is your age is less than 18. That way that ensures that anyone that indicates they are a minor will be skipped just to the end of the survey. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and name this question block demographics. I you do that just by clicking the name, typing it in, and then go ahead and select, uh, go ahead and either add a page break or a new block of questions on your survey. And we're gonna go over um, how to do a like art question, which is just like a, a matrix where you can, oops. Um, it's a matrix question where you uh, can, have a scale of answers. Um, so that's what this one is. Um, 
So that's matrix table under question type. When you add a new question, that is what you will select to add this question. Instead of multiple choice, you'll go down to matrix table right here. And that will give you a matrix of responses. So you can go ahead and type in the answers right here. And again, if you want to edit multiple at the same time, you can do that. And that works much easier if you are having a very long matrix table where you're going to have a couple different rows. Uh, you can do them all at the same time and just hit enter after each one, and that will put you into the next one. And then we're going to have five different options. So here, uh, Again, if you want to change it and lower it or raise it, the scale points, the number of scale points here is on the left. And it's uh, you can just type them in. You also have the option of using um, the suggested scale, scale points. So you have agree to disagree um, and true to false, inappropriate to appropriate. Um, there is a bunch of recommended ones. Um, positive or negative, et cetera, uh, you can uh, go through those and see if those will work for any of your questions. Or you can just, again, type in your own. Um, it may, once you put like strongly agree, automatically fill in the other ones, but you can always click and change them. Uh, or if it just gave you too many, you can lower the number of responses here. And then also another th helpful thing is you can randomize the um, order that these will be displayed in just to take out any bias that can potentially come with uh, how which uh, question came first or second. Uh, so to do that, you would go down to to where statement randomization is, um, which is right here. You would select that and that will pop up this dialog box and it'll automatically be selected at no randomization. And then you can just change it to display answers in a random order and hit save. And then all three of these will be displayed in a random order to each respondent so that you can account for any bias in the order that the statements are made in. And then lastly, another thing I'm gonna show you is how to recode the values. So in your downloaded data later when you're analyzing results, if you want strongly agree to uh, be associated with a higher value like four and strongly disagree to be associated with a lower value like one, um, you it'll automatically put your first option as the lowest ones if you wanna recode the value and put, uh, you would select recode value. And then I'm gonna, oops, I'm gonna start at five since there's five options. Four, three, two, one. Um, so that way the strongly agrees will be associated with the higher numbers where the disagrees will be in the lower numbers. So if you're doing averages and stuff and would like to have it in a number form, uh, that will be what is associated with each response. Um, so I'm just gonna hit close. And now that is recoded. Uh, so that's all for this video and I will see you in the next video. We're gonna stop here and go over more question types in the part two.